Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at some very interesting copper compounds um, involving this stuff by Rhett as a ligand. Mainly we'll follow this paper from the 1960s once again for the preparation of some very interesting complexes. Um, yeah, we already made this other complex right here. It has a beautiful purple color. This is some disodium... Uh, hold on. It's some disodium dimuhydroxobisbireto dicuprate 2 tetrahydrate. Yeah, that's... That's an easy and convenient name. Anyways, the paper already has, like, a drawing of the structure in here. This, right there. Um, it's basically two copper uh, atoms, each coordinated with a biuret molecule, and then those two uh, copper biuret things are bridged together with two hydroxide um, ligands. That's why it's called like that dimuhydroxo something. Anyways, that is only one of the complexes one can make with copper and biuret. Um, there are several others. And the one we're taking a look at now is the bis biuret copper complex. So basically it's without the weird hydroxide shit bridging the things. And it's just with two biuret molecules directly coordinated to the copper. So uh, yeah, we're just mixing up some copper sulfate uh, biuret and sodium hydroxide once again. And that should do it. So at this point, um, we're left with this actually quite beautiful dark red solution of this complex, which is already quite interesting because copper normally doesn't form like red complexes. Copper complexes are normally green or blue or something, maybe purple, but not red. Come on. Um, anyways, uh, this thing kind of reeks of ammonia, probably because it's been sitting here in this room for like two weeks and the biuret is doing something weird with the sodium hydroxide I think. Anyways I'm gonna try and get this out like as a solid, like extract the complex as like a crystalline solid. That's what I'm gonna try and do. So um, basically this involves trying to slowly evaporate off water by maybe heating it to like 50 C um, and blowing air over it with this this shitty little aquarium pump. We know from past experience that these kind of these kinds of basic complexes don't really like being heated. So I'm gonna try and keep the temperature like at like 50 to 60 degrees to maybe avoid decomposition a little. I don't know, we can filter off oxides if there are any later, but still, we want to avoid it. So, uh, yeah, just gonna fucking turn this on, and yeah, we'll see what happens.
I need some of this useless crap. Oh yeah. So after drying, here it is. Um, it seems to have kind of like, well, not decomposed, but it seems to have lost like some like hydration water, so it turned into this pink fine powder instead of those nice red crystals. But it's still the same compound. If I just dissolve some of it in water, I get this pink solution again. So it's not something else. It is that complex. Uh, it's not very much really um i thought there would be more <laughs> maybe i lost a bunch during the recrist uh, i'm not even going to calculate a yield here so now this white solution right here that was like left over from all the like washings and the recrist uh, is still actually quite useful to us because it allows us to prepare yet another quite interesting compound um, because apparently some people in the 60s well more like 1970 but come on that still counts I uh, figured out how to make how to make like copper 3 complexes from this stuff basically they just added a solution of like sodium no potassium persulfate to this and it turned into like uh, what sodium bisbiuret cuprate 3 whatever anyways copper 3 copper 3 plus uh, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I don't have any persulfate. Uh, apparently, hydrogen peroxide also works. I've tried that. It works, but I don't have too much hydrogen peroxide, and I, want, I don't want to waste it, really. Um, apparently, also bleach works, but you got to be careful, really. But what I do have is this. This is... I don't know where does it say it yeah I don't know it doesn't say it here um, this is potassium peroxy monosulfate and it's a pool chemical hold on there oh yeah and basically this works just as well so I'll just I don't know make a solution of this and mix it and it shall do
so this is it after drying. It's this rather boring brown powder. Um, its chemistry is about equally as boring, really. Um, it does react with hydrochloric acid, oxidizing it to chlorine and water. But really, its reactivity is kind of hampered by its low solubility, because this just doesn't dissolve at all. Its color is also quite disappointing, because, well, it's quite an exotic uh, copper 3 species, so you'd expect it to be some, like, spicy orange or red or something that just looks like a high oxidation state, but it's brown. Maybe it could be, like, purple, like permanganate, but no. Fucking boring ass brown. Alright, as always, that's it. Once again, uh, we made some rather, well, not so pretty, but also some quite pretty colors today. Um, it's red, so, uh, I don't know, Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, until the next year, I suppose. Uh, bye.